In this tutorial in CyberLink Color Director, we're going to give you some tips on how to read the information you find in a tool called the histogram. If I'm going to use that tool on a still image or video clip, first of all, I need to take it and put it in the storyboard. So I'm going to take the clip of this young woman and the other three I have here and drop them all into my storyboard. That will allow me to click on my adjustment menu at the upper left corner, the center one, and get into my tools. Now, I need to be not in the presets tab, but in the manual tab. And the first option I have here is called histogram. Let me click on that. If I click on the right arrow, it will open up my histogram. What is this and what do these graphs mean? When I first looked at the histogram, I thought it was looking at my image from left to right. That's not the case. For example, you see a red spike here. It doesn't mean that a quarter of the way into this picture I have red. What it's doing is it's taking every pixel on the entire image. And this is a clip, so it would be in this particular frame. And it's graphing them from black on the left to white on the right. So it's measuring from black to white the saturation of these colors. I can click on the red, I can isolate the green or the blue, or I can do all three together. And most people work off what we call this gray one, which is my composite. What you want in a perfect, perfectly exposed picture is something like a bell curve, where it rises in the middle and falls toward either end. You don't want it overexposed. This is called clipping. And if I'm clipping on the black side, I have my scale climbing the wall, as it were, on the left side of the graph, and I'm losing data. If I'm clipping on the right side, and you see some of that here is climbing the wall on the right. And if I click on my tone controls, you see down here we have brightest, bright, midtone, dark, and darkest. And if I highlight these, you see each of them uh, grayed out a little bit in my histogram. So there's my brightest area, my bright area, my midtones, my dark, and my darkest. So that's how you can see the histogram working as I make adjustments. Remember, too, that the histogram will change over time if you're working with a clip. If I play the clip, we're going to see a little bit of variation from frame to frame, depending on what we're doing. Now, we won't see a lot in this particular case because the subject is mostly still. She'll raise her hand and move her hair in a moment. And you'll see it change quite a bit then. But uh, the camera and the subject are relatively still, and so you don't see a lot of variation. But uh, you actually can uh, change the characteristics of your picture from frame to frame. We won't worry about that. We'll just focus on the entire clip in this exercise. There's another tool you have here. We'll, we're going to uh, stop the play here. And that's at the upper right corner. You have this item, if I hover over it, show over or under exposed areas. If I click on that, it will show me on my preview screen in red areas that are overexposed or underexposed. In this case, since we are climbing the wall on the right side, it's the brightest colors, the whitest colors. Here I'm losing data. Uh, uh, it's just become a pure blurry white, and I don't have much information here. It's, most of it's been lost uh, because it's uh, been overexposed. I'm not having too much problem on the underexposed and the blacks in this particular clip. Let's look at another one. I'm just going to click on this one and it will analyze it instantly. You see quite a different graph here. Again, I'm not having any problems with underexposure with my blackest blacks. But if I look over here, uh, we're close to having issues in the whites. And you see all the red that comes up when I have this item highlighted. This is an on and off switch. If I click it again, it goes away. If I click it again, it will analyze. So up here, all my whites kind of bled out. Uh, I'm clipping really good here and over here and even in the flag. Uh, and this will vary too according to where I am in my shot. If I move here, 
I have some clipping down here and then in the flag in the middle. So uh, it allows you to see where you have some issues going on. Um, if we click on this next picture, we find yet a different graph. Again, in my blacks I'm fine, but I'm really overexposed here uh, in the white area. And you see the little red here is on these tree branches. We've lost a lot of definition here because the white is overexposed. Uh, taking another one here, this is a different graph. We, we have uh, a pretty good, pretty good representation here. Um, and uh, I, might, I might see a few issues with my darks over here and a, a little bit with a white. But when I look at the gray scale, which is the composite scale, it's really not too bad. Going back to this picture here, let's see how we can make some changes. The best way to make changes in the, when you see a histogram is doing it when you're filming. And if you have a histogram available in your video equipment, that's the time to check it out and make some changes. But if you want to do post-production, probably one of the best controls of all the ones you have here in Color Director is your tone control. Here you can actually take the actual exposure. Watch what happens when I dial this one back, how it changes the picture, but it also changes the histogram. You see, I'm moving off of that right side a little bit. Or you can actually go to the individual areas and you can change these. We'll, we'll click the brightness down a little bit. Uh, we might want to take the darkness and move it up a little so we get more of a bell curve. So watch your picture and you can change these uh, sliders all you want. And you can also uh, also pay attention to the histogram because the information up here is even a little more scientific than what you may have in your picture. But that gives you an example of what you can do and how it will may, may change. Again, we have a still picture, so we don't have lots of variation there. Um, but these are ways in which you can begin to modify it intelligently. Again, you have this uh, a reset option, the left arrow, to turn it back toward what it was to start with if you want to go ahead and change things. One more uh, option. Let's go back to this young woman. Let's get rid of a little bit of the overexposure here, but I don't want her eyes uh, to be even more of a raccoon look than they are. So uh, we'll look on the brightest and we'll see if we can just take it down just a little bit here and see we're getting rid of some of the exposure parts just by dealing with the brightest scale as opposed to the exposure scale. When I drew that down, her face gets dark and I don't want that. So I can just dial down my brightest a little bit and maybe take my darkest and move it uh, uh, a little bit darker. Now I'm getting now I'm getting the other option. See the blue there tells me that I'm working on some problem areas there. But uh, this will allow you to, to uh, move that chart around and you want the bell curve if possible. Not every picture should be bell curved because of the way you're filming it and the colors you're dealing with. But this gives you a, a bit of a way in which to, to see where do I go with my picture? How do I make this particular clip? or still image look better in ColorDirector.